Hi, we're going to discuss a number of psukim in Parshat Re'eh, where the Torah finally allows the Jews, when they come into Eretz Yisrael, after they conquer the land, and after they parcel out the land to the Shvatim, that they'll be able to eat meat. And we'll read two of the psukim, and then we'll discuss exactly how much the Torah actually gives us a green light for eating meat and approves of eating meat from animals. When Hashem will broaden your boundaries, that you'll get the land, and it doesn't mean that you'll conquer extra land, it means the land of Eretz Yisrael. And you will say, I feel like having meat. And I have a desire, you have real want and you have a desire for eating meat. So Hashem says, yes, you're allowed to have the meat. And the Pasuk even continues, it's not like in the Midbar anymore, according to the accepted opinion of Rabbi Shmuel. It means that in the Midbar, they had to bring Korbanot to the Mishkan. But afterwards, when they settled the land, they were able to have uh, meat shechted wherever they were and to eat the meat according to their desire without bringing it as a sacrifice in the Beit HaMikdash. Now, again, the Pasuk says, you can eat it in your towns, wherever you are, in your cities, in the gates of your cities. Again, the emphasis is on that you have a want and you can fulfill that want. Now, the question arises, why does Rashi over here and the Gemara in Chulin, where Rashi is based on, they all come in and give caveats to this idea that you're allowed to eat meat. What's the problem? The Pasuk seems to say very clearly that it's fine to eat meat from live animals that you shechted. And Rashi comes along and says over here, that a person shouldn't have a desire to eat meat unless he has a comfortable life, and Osher, he has a certain amount of wealth. In the Gemara and Chulin Pei Dalit, it seems that Rashi is saying that the problem might be that a person goes over his budget. But in the Rashi on the Torah, it doesn't seem that the problem is a financial one. It seems that the problem is some kind of uh, societal norms or Torah morality, that it's not the best thing to eat uh, meat from an animal. Secondly, the Gemara has further drashot and says also that we learn out from the Pasuk in Vayikra that if a person is a tzad, seid chaya o'of, he has to cover the dam, and the, and the Gemara learns out that we don't have to interpret literally only in a case uh, that you have to cover the dam when you went to hunt an animal, but even if not, and what do we use the pasu ki yatsud for? We use it to tell us that a person should always do a hachana, a preparation for eating what he wants to eat. And what is the idea of this preparation? Now to explain this idea, I would like to get to a picture uh, by Don Eddy. It's called uh, Rosen Brothers Strictly Kosher Meats. And if we look at the picture, the picture is a butcher store. And the butcher store is showing inside the store, you can see inside the store, you can see the seller inside the store, you can see the cash register, but you can also see the reflections of the buildings across the street of uh, a neighborhood that gives the impression of being pretty homey. It is a city neighborhood, an urban neighborhood, but on the other hand, it looks fine and it looks homey, and it seems that this is a picture that gives a pleasant aesthetic experience to a person who would go into a butcher store in his neighborhood and he wants to buy meat to bring home, that he will consume the meat. But before explaining uh, 
Further, what we see in the picture, I would just like to say that, first of all, this isn't a picture, a photograph. It's a photorealistic work of art, which is based on a number of pictures that the artists from this school in the 60s, 70s, 80s, into the 90s even, um, would take a number of pictures and paint a very, very accurate painting based on the number of pictures that they took. In this way, they were able to bring into a picture reflections in a much stronger way than you would see them in a store window. Building comes out very clearly. The person working in the store is drowning in a number of images that surround him from the inside of the store and from the outside of the store. Now, what can we take further from this picture? As we said on the first hand, it seems that the, it is a pleasant and aesthetically pleasing picture. On the other hand, there is a rectangle on the left of a rows of chickens who seem to remind us, wait a second, we once used to be chickens and take uh, please pay attention to the fact that we were once alive because they still look very much like the chickens that they were originally from when they came from the farm. But now they are on the way or very far on the way to becoming just food to be consumed by human beings. Now, but why do I bring this in to the Parsha over here? I think a similar idea does come into the Parsha. Why, again, we asked, does the Torah, uh, even though the Torah seems to clearly state that a person has legitimate right to want to have meat, and it is fine, on the other hand, there are the limitations that Rashi brings in, that the Gemara brings in, and the Medrash brings in. Why do these come up? Number one, Ta'aven Afshecha is a word that brings back all kinds of memories from other psukim in the Torah. Lo there are desires that aren't okay. There is Kivrota Ta'ava, the case of the Slav, when the Jews in the Midbar wanted to have meat in the Midbar, and the Rebbe Shalom gave it to them, but they died, and there were Kivrot Ta'ava, that was the name that the Torah gave to that place in the Midbar. And thirdly, the Pasuk, right after the Pasukim that we read originally, says, Rak Chazak, I allow you to have the meat, Rak Chazak, Levilti Achol Adam, Ki Adam Wanafesh. There is chiyut in this animal. There is life in this animal. It's not here anymore. You shifted. The life is situated more exactly or more dominantly in the blood of the animal. And if it is a chayava of, then you have to cover it. Not if it's a... Not if it's a cow. But if it's a chayava of, you do have to cover the blood. And in any case, we are reminding you that this once came from a live animal. And there is uh, Beit Yaakov from the Shoshelet of uh, Hasidut Ishbitz Radzin on Parshat Noach that I think very well expresses the idea that I want to bring out over here, which is that we should pay attention to the origin of the food and think twice of what we are about to eat and if we really want to eat it and if it is justified in our eyes to eat this meat. The Beis Yaakov asks, why in Parshat Noach all of a sudden the animals are allowed to be eaten by human beings? If in Parshat Breshid, man was not allowed, Adam was not allowed to eat meat from Baalei Chaim. Why all of a sudden they are? He says that after the Mabul, the, before the Mabul, the animals didn't want to throw in their lot with the human beings. Why? Because they were afraid maybe the animals are on a higher level in creation than the humans because humans have free will and it's possible that they'll sin. But we, the animals, we do according to what our nature given by God is and we won't get into trouble. So we won't throw our lot with the human beings and we won't be eaten by the human beings. But then after the Mabul, all of a sudden they got together and they decided, well, Noah came out on top and uh, it says also that the animals got, in, got themselves into trouble in the Mabul, ki shchit pol basar et koala aretz. So now we're willing to be consumed by human beings because they will bring us up on the ladder of creation and serve God with the strength that we give them. Now, there's a lot to say about the Beit Yaakov, but one thing that comes out very strong from the Beit Yaakov is that 
we have a reminder that even though we are allowed to eat in Parshat Re'e Basar, Ki ta'ave nafshi le'chol basar, I feel like eating meat, I have a want to eat meat, but on the other hand, the Pasuk is saying, remember, there is chiyut here, there is an animal that once used to be alive, and it is something that you should take into account when you fulfill this desire.